When we create hierarchies, we simplify the complexity of the world around us because we divide up a large, complex, undifferentiated set of things into a more understandable, organized system. Hierarchies represent the idea of generalization and specialization. When we look at the animal kingdom and the hierarchy that has been simplified tremendously in this diagram, we see that reptiles and mammals and fish specialize all of the common features of animal. And similarly, dogs, cows, horses, cats, and gerbils specialize what it means to be a mammal. Special kinds of dogs are hounds and terrier. Each of these, as you move down this hierarchy, achieves greater level of specialization. And as you move up the hierarchy, shows greater level of generalization. We can apply this in Windows terms to the specialization of the various kinds of windows in a given windowing system. For example, in Microsoft Windows system, dialog boxes and controls and documents are all types of windows, all specializations of windows. And text boxes, buttons, and list boxes are types of controls. Similarly, command buttons and check boxes are types of buttons. So we're seeing specialization as we move down the hierarchy from window to control to button, and generalization as we move up. Control generalizes the characteristics of the various specialized types. In C Sharp, you implement specialization through the mechanism of inheritance. When you inherit, we talk about creating a derived class. And the class you inherit from is known as the base class. So for example, if you create a list box and inherit from window, then window would be the base class and list box would be the derived class. When you declare your class list box, if you want to show that it derives from window, you use the colon operator and then the name of the base class, in this case, window. The derived class can have its own members and its own methods, but it also inherits the members and methods of the base class. The derived class always must have its own constructor. Typically, the purpose of a derived class is to specialize and extend the base class. Let's take a look at inheritance by looking at a person class that would have a member variable age. Next, we derive from person to create the employee object, and we'll add two new member variables, base level and bonus level. Employee also inherits the age member from the person class. The employee class specializes person. An employee is a specialized kind of person. And the person class is a generalization of employee. Put very simply, inheritance is merely the ability of one class to derive functionality from another class. So if I've got a class that prov provides and defines some basic functionality that I want to use elsewhere, I can derive another class from it, and all of the structure and content of that class will be derived or inherited by that subclass. So the source of the content is referred to as the base class. This is where the content's actually coming from. And the recipient of that content is called the subclass or derived class. Now we actually have a number of different terms that we can use. Um, for the base class, you'll often sometimes hear the term superclass or parent class. For the subclass, you'll hear terms such as child class, as well as derived class. So there's a lot of terminology here. Most of it, however, is pretty intuitive. Um, if we're going to allow inheritance to be a part of our model, however, it really has to be well designed. It needs to be designed very well from the very beginning. The idea really is, is that if I change any of the behaviors in that base class, then that means the subclasses will immediately see those changes. See, the content of the source class, the base class, is not actually compiled into the subclass, but rather the subclass makes a call up to the base class in order to access its content. So that means if the base class changes any of its behaviors, then the subclasses will be required to immediately work under those changes and assumptions. That means that if you make a change to a base class that doesn't make sense based on the way the subclass is created, then it could cause a problem. So it's important to make sure that if you use inheritance, it's very, very well designed because this could cause, if you're not careful, more problems than good. Now technically, every class that you create in C-sharp derives from a class called object. 
The object is the base class. It's really at the base of the entire object hierarchy in C Sharp. So even if you don't physically and explicitly derive your class from any other base class, it does derive from object. And all the functionality that's in the object class will automatically be a part of every single class, no matter how it's physically inherited. Now, a derived class or a subclass will derive and inherit everything from its base class with the exception of constructors and destructors. Sometimes you have elements that are available in that base class that are not actually visible because of their accessibility, such as a private member, for example, might be defined in the base class, but not actually accessible by the derived class. It still technically inherits to that derived class, but because of the accessibility issues, uh, the derived class is not actually able to access that functionality directly. Now, in C Sharp, we use a single inheritance model, and that means that the derived class can never be more accessible than its base class, and the derived class can, at most, have one base class. So that means that I could not derive a subclass that comes from two different or three different base classes and then aggregate their functionality together. I'm not allowed to do that. And I'm not allowed to make that derived class more accessible than its base class because that would provide additional exposure to some of those methods in the base class which may not really be valid. Now if you like to, you can change. This is referred to as overriding. You can change or add to the members of the base class. So if you want to modify some of the members that are defined by the base class, or if you want to add additional members to that base class from the derived class location, you can do that in your inheritance plan. Now the basic syntax for using inheritance in C-sharp involves the use of the colon operator. Let's assume for a second that we had a base class called dog. And in this dog base class, we're defining all the basic functionality. You know, what makes a dog? If I'm interested in creating a class called Poodle, which derives from dog, it inherits all the functionality of dog, it may just provide some additional functionality, override some methods, etc. The syntax would be to create a class called Poodle colon dog. Now the colon, read that as derives from or extends. So by saying class poodle colon dog, I'm saying I'll create a class called poodle which derives from or extends class dog. Then obviously you specify the content of that class. Now technically what that means is that all of the accessible functionality of the dog class can now be called from an instance of the class poodle. Assuming that the members of the dog class are accessible, so they're marked as public or protected, um, they're available, they're not private members. As long as they're accessible, we do have the ability at this point to call those members directly from an instance of class Poodle. This is true even though technically the Poodle class does not contain formal implementations of those methods.